Welcome again to this another edition of teaching. Uh, I appreciate you. I really uh, bless you. I pray that the Lord will continue blessing you for your faithfulness, for everything you're doing for Him. Because the Lord is not a man to lie, nor a son of man to repent. The Lord is not unfaithful. The Lord will forever be faithful. And He keeps His word. And He says that He's the rewarder of all those who trust Him, who believe in Him. As you continue doing that, let the Lord continue blessing you. Today we are coming with another topic. And we just pray that the Lord will help us all together. The Holy Spirit will lead us in all the truth. That we may see the truth and we may walk in the truth. But before we go on, let us just have a word of prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. We thank you for the truth of uh, your word, Lord. We just thank you, Lord, of much God, that you've made it again possible for us to be here, Lord, and to just uh, speak about your word, oh, Lord, of much God, and glorify you. So, the reason why, Lord, we just bless you, Lord, and we say, take control of everything, Lord, from the beginning to the end. You are the Lord, and we inform you in the name of Jesus. We so pray the thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. So today, what I would like to talk about is uh, another controversial uh, topic uh, in the church today, which is, is anyone able to believe, you know, in Jesus Christ? Is anyone able to follow the Lord today or is it only when the Lord forces someone to believe uh, let me put it in this way are you able is anyone able today to know the Lord you know like to decide to follow the Lord or is it only when the Lord himself decides to touch a certain person and to call him unto himself? You know, it, it, this is the only issue. So I, I, I just want to talk about these things and to see what the Bible reveals to us. As I always tell you that it is not just a matter of reading what we are reading is a matter of understanding is is a matter of comprehend comprehending what we are reading you know because the bible said that the people don't comprehend you know they they did not comprehend these things so unless the lord gives you the spirit to comprehend his word so you can be reading uh you can distort the word of God. You can bring other meanings to it. You can, you know, it it doesn't matter how much you are trying to find out the Greek words, the, the, the Hebrew words, and those things, they do not help you to know the truth, to interpret the word of God according to the truth. You, It may sound weird what I'm saying, but... As I, I told you in one of the teachings I made, I told you that it is so clear. Why is it clear? Because the people who lived the same time Jesus lived, they spoke the same language. The people who spoke Greek language, they still understood Greek language. The people who, who spoke Hebrew language, they still understood Hebrew language, but they could not understand what Jesus was saying. You know, they could not understand what the apostles were teaching. So, it's not a matter of <laughs> knowing what the Greek language says this, the Hebrew language says this in translating or in, interpret, in interpreting the word of God, but it's a matter of the Spirit of God, being led by the Spirit. Because... As I always say, we do not discover God. We do not study God. You know, we do not discover God. God cannot be discovered. God is revealed. He reveals Himself to us as He chooses to, and that's the only way we know Him. 
is by revelation. That's why the word of God says that the wise of this world cannot understand these things. You know, they are wise, they are supposed to be the ones who understand better these things, but they cannot understand because this is not a matter of intellect. This is not a matter of wisdom, you know, human wisdom. This is not a matter of, you know, knowing that language or knowing this language. This is a matter of revelation. So, going back to what we want to talk about today, this is preached in our churches today. You hear many people saying that, and I do believe that this destroys the church and is a misunderstanding of what the Lord is doing, of the revelation of God. You know, does anyone have ability today to believe in Jesus Christ, to come to the Lord, or it's only those the Lord points out, those the Lord chooses, you know, especially to enlighten them to accept Him. You understand what I mean? So, what is the Bible telling us about that? I, I do believe that most of all these things, most of the confusion that comes uh, is about confusing how the Lord works with Israel in the Old Testament and how the Lord is working with the church today. is misunderstanding why Jesus came, you know. They say it right that they get every they get it wrong at the end. <laughs> you understand? Is to misunderstand the even the reason why Jesus Christ came. In the old time, it is so clear. I do not want to go back into those things. It's so clear that the Lord worked with Israel. The Lord concentrated more on Israel. He called Israel my people. So the prophets, they, you know, came out of Israel and he was for Israel. So all those who were not of Israel, they were considered, you know, the, the pagans, you know, they, they, they were considered not the people of God because they were not, they were not of Israel. So that's the reason why everything the Lord was doing, it was much concentrated on Israel, you know, it was all about Israel. And with some exception in the way that there are other people who are not of Israel, but the Lord decided to take them and to plug them to his people. You know, people like Ruth, people like uh, Rahab of, you know, uh, Jericho. And the Lord picking people like that exceptionally to plug them to his people. So those the Lord chose. And there is a reason why. If we go deeper, we see that they are image. Because the Bible says that the Old Testament is as to save us as an example. is the shadow of the things to come. The reality which is now in Jesus Christ. The fulfillment of all that was like a shadow example now is fulfilled in him. So it was the image of how the Lord would pick the nations and make them inherit, you know, uh, to, you know, together with his people. How he would take the nation and plug them, the wide tree, to plug them, you know, to his people, to, 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 to bring them uh, into his plan, in, in, in salvation plan. So, that was a image, that was a 
picture that was an example because what the Lord did in, you know, in Old Testament, it was not only by any chance. So everything we done according to his will, according to his purpose, according to his plan. You may remember even as he said to Moses that make sure you build, you make that tab 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 tabernacle according to every to the pattern I showed you on the cross. So make sure you make it according to the pattern. So it was the exact model. The Lord knew what he was doing and the old tabernacle which we can see now in the work of Jesus Christ said Jesus Christ himself being the tabernacle of God because everything all the work of the tabernacle you know everything that was to happen to, to be done in the tabernacle is fulfilled in Jesus Christ the living tabernacle of God so you see that this thing the Lord was doing in Old Testament it is fulfilled so now preaching our theology trying to like give examples of the what was like the shadow of the reality to come considering it as the reality until now I think is a bad theology I, I think it's a it's, it's a bad way to understand the scriptures so, coming to what we are saying, saying that those who are being saved or those who accept the Lord Jesus Christ today or those who are able to receive Jesus today are only those that the Lord is speaking, you know, as he went to pick Ruth, as he went to pick uh, Rehab, as he went to pick, you know, who these people who were Gentiles who were foreigners, who were strangers, to bring them to Israel. So it's still the same way that the Lord is working. I think that is is a misunderstanding of the whole issue. It's misunderstanding of the whole revelation of God. Even though those who preach like that, they still say that it's the revelation of God. Because everyone anyway says that they have the spirits of God. Everyone says that. I was just following a, another pastor who who thinks also that way and after his teaching and uh, one guy asked him a question he said that okay doctor as you just said uh, but if every Christian has the spirits of God don't you think that everyone would be preaching the same thing because they, we all have the spirits of God then we should be preaching the same message the same thing and I, I i got interested i want to hear what the doctor was going to answer and the doctor said you know he was trying to explain a lot of stuff but at the end then he says that yeah it's really amazing how people comes with their preconceived ideas you know uh and just destroy the word of god they do not want you know to see that truth and they because they've preconceived ideas they they've cut things that they been learning for years and i say what this man is talking about is not the true answer you know to this problem it may be one of the answer i i, I don't reject that but that is not the real issue because why did he say that he said it because he does not want to admit that someone can call himself a christian but he does not have the spirit of god because according to them every christian has the spirit of god as even another was saying that no one can call jesus lord if not by the spirit of god so meaning everyone who says Jesus is Lord he says it by the Spirit of God I say th that's a misunderstanding again of the scripture because we know that not everyone who says Lord says it by the Spirit of God so this theology of saying that everyone who says is a Christian has the Spirit of God 
is not a correct theology. We say that everyone who is a true Christian has the Spirit of God, but we do not believe that everyone who says he's a Christian has the Spirit of God. We have a lot of Christians today who do not have the Spirit of God. Paul even himself said it. There are many who do not have the Spirit of God. So we we don't now the guy did not just want to admit <laughs> that you can be Christian because according to them being Christian is just to say Lord I receive you I, I want you in my life you are Christian finish because it's it's just that so everyone who says that he has the Spirit of God that's not true Paul even said that I was in danger among the false brethren he called them false brethren so if they, they are false brethren uh, do they still have the spirit of God if they were fighting Paul if they were betraying Paul so they still have the spirit of God so you see that we misunderstand the whole issue the Bible even say that certain beliefs that God exists demons they believe they even they know that Jesus is the Lord But, do, do we say that they have the spirits of God? No. The problem is, when we say believe, when we say no one says call Jesus Lord unless by the spirits of God, that is not only calling, saying that Jesus is Lord, but is submitting to the Lordship of God. You know, remember, and again, I will repeat it. I said, we are trying to communicate the mysteries of God but with the languages of men. So, the languages of men are imperfect. They, they, they are not perfect. They, they, they cannot express the, you know, enough what God is. The mysteries, the spiritual things, they are, they are infinite. We are finite, we are, our minds are finite, our words are limited, so we are trying to explain these things. But that's why I say you need the spirits of God to, to reveal these things to you, to lead you in understanding the truth. So that's what it is. If you call Jesus Lord by the Spirit of God, you submit to Jesus' Lordship. Submitting to Jesus' Lordship is to follow Him to do His will. To live as He said you should live. Then we know that it's by the Spirit of God, of the Lord. Remember, Jesus Himself said that it's not those, only those who call me Lord, Lord, that shall enter the kingdom, but those who do the will of my Father. So He said that not those who call me Lord, Lord. So how can you say that no one can call Jesus Lord, not by the Spirit? Now, who are those Jesus said that they are calling me Lord, but they will not enter the kingdom? Or, we know that if you have the Spirit of God, you enter the kingdom. Because the Spirit of God seal you into the family of God. The sonship. So, if you are in the family of God, you the spirits of God, the spirits of God has sealed you in the family of God, you enter in the kingdom. But Jesus said that not all those who not all who call me Lord Lord will enter. But only those who do. That's why I say that calling Lord by the spirits of God is where submitting to the Lordship. Calling is not only calling, but is believing he is submitting to his Lordship and walking with him. So now that was old testament where the lord was moving working with israel only israel and deciding to pick up the some of the strangers foreigners gentiles to plug them you know to his people as to show you know, to reveal what is coming, the grace of the Lord 
going to the nations, you know, bringing the nations in. And that's what happens today. So today we are in new dispensation. We are in new uh, covenant. We are today in the light because the fulfillment has already happened. You know, everything is fulfilled in Jesus Christ and he opened a new way, a new covenant. Let us read. And now, how do we view things as people living in the new covenant? The Bible says in the book of Gospel of John, chapter 1, Gospel of John chapter 1 verse 3 All things were made for him and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of man. In him was light and the life was the light of man. So this word of God which was before the creation, the word that created everything, the Bible said that it became flesh and came and lived among us and they say that in him, they say that because that word was life and that life was the light of man. So now see where I'm going. So that word came, live among us and he was life and that life of the light. So they say in verse 5, And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. So where did the light come to shine? The light did not come to shine in the light. The light came to shine in the darkness. <laughs> Just be with me. The light came to shine in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. This man came for a witness to bear witness of the light. John came to bear witness of the light. This is a new covenant. This is the fulfillment. This is the accomplishment. This is where everything that we saw in the old testament is coming to completion is is the old the revelation is being now fulfilled you know in the man of jesus christ the plan of rescue the plan of salvation everything we saw you know doing the sacrificing and bringing people uh, to be you know to be saved to make right with god everything is fulfilled in the man Jesus Christ and this man the Bible say that is life and that life is the light that came to shine where in the darkness so John came to testify of the light so he saying people light has come light has come now he said that Okay, uh, let's see, light that all, John came to testify of the light that all through him might believe, that all through him might believe, that all through the light might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light which gives light. <laughs> that was the true light which gives light to every man coming into this world. Now listen. That was the true light giving light to every man coming into this world so now thinking about the issue of can is a man able to believe or it happens only when Jesus where he is or he has chosen from the beginning 
who believes and who's not gonna believe that's jesus doing it i i think that this has been an issue of debate for centuries even studying theology i think that it has been an issue of debate over and over and over and over and you know what no one convinces another to leave his position you know uh, what he believes in so people continue believing what they believe and so we continue that's why i always say my reason of doing this is not that i'm trying to convince anyone i'm not trying to convince anyone because that's not the mandate that i have i do not have a mandate to convince people i have a mandate to speak the word that's the mandate i have a mandate to speak and the sheep will hear the voice so it's not about mandating it's not about convincing no because no one can convince another to believe into something it's not into us to to convince people but according to this with everything that happens in the old testament the lord trying always to bring someone close to him people close to him as you know that as people teach when we sinned and men lost everything the capability the capacity the ability to even consider that there is a god to even believe in a god in the lord i mean because they believed in other gods but they, they could not come back to god that's why god said now his plan of rescue of redeeming men or bringing men back to himself or reconciling with men so it happens as you know that it was happening in the Old Testament. The Lord chose Abraham and he told him to, him to leave his country. He told him to leave his family and to go to a place he would show him. And with Abraham, the Lord started a family, you know. The Lord started a family, Isaac, Jacob, you know. And then we have the 12 tribe of israel then we have the israelite and then we have all those we know until now so i want to focus on now jesus came from heaven the bible said that he is the light he came to bring that light in darkness and the bible says that that for him that light all should believe I, I do not want to complicate things I, I'm trying I'm trying hard to communicate this idea I'm trying hard to communicate this to you in a way that will be clear that may be understood so the whole world was living in darkness I'm not saying that only the people of God, but the whole world, you know, because now they are not dealing with Israel. They are saying that the whole world, that everyone, that the nations. So the light came to the world. The light did not come to Israel. <laughs> the light came to the world. It shined to the world. And the world could not comprehend it. But this light came to make it possible to those who are in darkness to see it you understand because they were in darkness so the light came to illuminate to bring to shine in the darkness that everyone living in darkness would be able to see it and the bible said that now to all those who believed in that in this light it was given the right to become the children the sons of God so the world the Bible said that when it shined and the world rejected it the world rejected it they saw it's not that they did not see that it's the light they saw that it was the light 
they reject, but to those who received, it was given to become children of God. So, what am I saying? By the understanding of this scripture, what I'm saying is, the Lord decided to fulfill what he showed as an example, picking some of the pagans in the Old Testament to attach them, to bring them, to make them live together with the Israelites. So now the Lord decided to fulfill that, to bring the nations in, to bring the nations in. And how does he do that? Because the nations were living in darkness. The nations were living in darkness. We're living in darkness. We we did not know God. We did not even think about him. Everyone worship his own God, you know. Now he came to bring light to those in darkness that we are the nations that we may see light. Okay, let me try to put it in this word. You know, the song of Amazing Grace. Amazing Grace that saved a wretch like me. I was blind, now I see. I was lost, now I am found. This is what I'm talking about. I was blind, now I see. Blind in darkness. Now light came to shine in darkness so that the blind people may see that's why before jesus healed that blind man he said i am the light of the world i am the light of the world i am come to give light to give sight to the blind and he touched that blind and the blind was healed he saw so those are the physical things to explain the spiritual what is happening what is going on that's why i told you last time do not confuse the miracle of Jesus was operating with what we are hearing today. Every miracle Jesus operated was for a purpose and had a meaning. So, the light came to shine to the pagans, to the entire world, that we who were blind living in darkness, we may see. That's the amazing grace. That's the grace. The grace of God does not come to one, in, you know, one person and uh, that uh, individual person, that individual, that particular person. No, the grace of God has come. That's what it means. It's not that He comes to you and He decides you come and believe. He forces someone to believe or he makes someone, I don't know how to put this word, and we say that that was the amazing grace. When we say that we are saved by grace, that was the grace. <laughs> that was the grace of God. Those living in darkness, the light came to shine because we could not see. We were blind. There was no way out. But the light came came shown in darkness so that we may open our eyes and we may see thus making it possible for anyone to believe so if we go around teaching people that you are unable to believe I, I don't know what we are talking about if we teach people that we are unable to believe, I don't know what we are talking about. We are not in the Old Testament. We are in the New Testament, the fulfillment, the accomplishment. Everything is fulfilled. It is done. The light has come and he shown to men. The Bible said that, that, <laughs> that men through that light should believe. So the light is already come. What do we, what are we talking about? The grace of God has already come. The grace of God is not, the, the grace of God is not something. The grace of God is a person is a man the grace of god is jesus christ that's the grace of god he has already come he has already shown in darkness that we may see 
So when we talk about the grace of God, we think that the grace of God is something, you know, that even today it comes to this man, it comes to this man. No, the grace of God has already come. The grace of God is done. The grace of God was here. The grace of God shone in darkness. He gave the, his light. He gave the light. And thus giving everyone a chance to see that light. <laughs> you know, when the sun rises, it rises for everyone. When the sun rises, it rises for everyone. That's the way you should understand these things. That's the way you should understand this grace of God. When the sun rises, it rises for everyone and everyone is able to see, to see it. Everyone can decide to see it unless he refuses to see it. That's why the Bible said the light shone and people rejected the light because they preferred to stay in darkness. The Bible is so clear. They loved darkness. Because in darkness, their works are not seen. Their works are hidden. So they preferred to be in darkness. But it's not that they cannot see the light. They see the light. They know that that's the light. But they refuse to follow the light. It's the same way. The gospel that we preach today is for everyone. And everyone is able to believe. If everyone is able to decide to believe, everyone is able. You know, do not say, do not tell people that no, they are unable to believe. Uh, the Lord has, I don't know, hardened them the way He did to Pharaoh. It's misunderstanding of what the Word of God, the revelation of Jesus Christ, is all about. Listen, if you. If, you, you keep that view of the Lord is adding people as he did with, with, with Pharaoh. What I know is that the Bible shows that in the New Testament, it shows that the Lord hardened Israel temporarily to bring the nations in. The Lord did not say that, the Bible does not say that the Lord hardened the, 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 the nations. No. That's not what the Lord is telling you. That's not what the word of God is saying. Which means all the nations right now, no one is hardened. <laughs> no one has is given the opportunity to see the light. The light has shone in darkness. If you want to harden yourself, you know what happens? Listen to what Paul says. Paul says that because they did not receive the love of the truth, that's why God sent them the spirits of delusion that they may believe a lie and perish. Why did the Lord send the spirit of delusion? Because they did not love the truth. The Lord did not make hell to send people to hell. No. Saying that the Lord has chosen already those who are going to hell, the Lord has chosen. You know, what you do not understand, the Lord is sovereign. Let, let, let's explain these things clearly. The Lord is a sovereign God. The sovereignty of God is what makes him a mystery. The sovereignty of God is what makes him different from us. Because the Lord can decide to do whatever he can decide to do. You understand? So, do not take the exception, you know, the things that the Lord can decide to do or not to do and make it a general rule as the gospel and preach it. No, because that's not the gospel. That's a domain reserved to God. L let me put it this way. Today, the Lord can decide that, okay, your days are, are over. It's not because you did something wrong. It's not because, you know, you sinned or the Lord can just decide to take you. That's that's. The suffering to God, that's, that, that's him, he's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. But we don't make it a rule. Of if a powerful, you know, a man of God died being killed. Okay, now it's a rule that every man of God should be a martyr. You know, 
should, should, should be crucified or should be hanged or should be thought like you know the apostles no it's not a rule you can be a servant of God you can be a, a message of God and die natural death not being killed so those are the things that the Lord chooses to do but there is a general rule there is a gospel and the gospel is that the grace came to every man the grace of God came to all men the light came to all men everyone is given a chance to believe if we I, I'm saying these things because I as I told you it's so dangerous and it's killing the church I spoke to some people who fell you know in the past into this you know kind of teaching and what do they tell you when you try to talk to him about the Bible he tells you he says well oh, pastor you know <laughs> the Lord did not choose me to be saved <laughs> you know I'm not a chosen one if the Lord had chosen me I would have been saved a long time I would have accepted him but the Lord did not choose me to be saved the Lord chose me to live the way I live you understand what I mean you can see that the man is wrong but because he had this kind of teachings telling him that the Lord has already chosen those who will believe and those who will not believe so the Lord chose they are chosen no they, they are not they are not the Lord knows who would be saved and who would not be saved the Lord knows because he is a world knowing God he knows the end from the beginning he he is the eternal God he sees everything there is nothing hidden before the Lord the Lord knows those who would believe and those who would not believe that's the word of God but choosing no let me tell you an example the Lord chooses his servant <laughs> that's accurate that's the truth when I taught you about the authority I told you that a servant of God should be chosen and sent by the Lord those are the chosen of the Lord but the Lord does not choose who's to be saved no the Lord does not choose the Lord wants everyone to be saved that's the will of the Lord is that everyone should be saved though not all will be saved but if they will do they will not be saved it will be by their own choice I, I I told you that the light shines and some reject the light that's what the Bible says but those who received they received the right to become because they received the light they became the sons of God but others prefer to reject that's why those who will end up in hell they will end up in hell for their own decisions the decision they made is <laughs> it's not to say then the Lord is playing tricks with us why would we make him this way because this is not me it's not my fault anyway it's not my fault it's the Lord who wants me to be to, to go to hell the, the Lord is not playing those kind of tricks our God is a just God <laughs> the Lord always works with justice if anyone will go to hell he will go to hell because of his own decisions because in the new covenant the light has come and the light has shone so that light is the light of the world whosoever believes he becomes the son of God so everyone can see the light now I don't know where these things come from to say that no one is able to believe if you're not able to believe and they don't understand even why Jesus came who is Jesus Christ that's the grace of God remember what Jesus said he gave a parable a story to you know to the uh, to the people and he said that there is a king 
who, <clears throat> who threw a party. And the time of the party, he noticed that the people were supposed to come to the party, they were not in the party. You know? And he sent his servant, go remind them, <laughs> tell them to come to the party. And when the servant went and everyone was giving reason, oh no, I've got this. Oh, my son is like this. Like this. Oh, I have another, another appointment. Have, they gave reasons. Did the Lord force them? No. And then the Lord came back, the servant came back and said that, Lord, they refused to come. And do you know what the Lord did? The Lord said that, the king said, now go everywhere to the streets where you go, whoever you, whoever you find, just invite him to the party. And the Bible said that the servants went and were just inviting anyone they met in the street and the party was full of the people who were not even supposed to be in the party. That's what I'm talking about. That's the grace of God to those people. They were not supposed to be there. But when the grace came to them, it's to everyone. <laughs> you know, the, the king did not say to the servant that, okay, go choose only those you, those who seem to be like this, those, no. There was no condition. There was no exception. It was to everyone give the message whosoever believes or wants to we come in the body but whoever refuses then he will refuse this is what i'm talking about this is the quest and this is the word of god this is the word of god the grace has come and the grace is a person is jesus christ that Jesus Christ declared to be the light of the world. He came to give light to those in darkness. That there is no excuse today to say that I don't see the light. There is no excuse. People who, <laughs> who say that they are not being honest. They are not being honest. I... With all these years, I've been in the ministry doing these things, preaching the word, you know, in so different places and different countries, I met different people and I spoke to so many people, you know, out of the Christian world, the people who are not Christians, the people who are of other, you know, like religions and, and especially to these bad, bad people you know, tanks and, uh, you know, people in drug and whatever, you know. Speaking to these people, you realize that what I'm saying is the truth. It's not that they do not know. It's not that they cannot see the light. They see it, but they decide not to follow it. <laughs> they see the light, but they decide that they will not follow it. That's different from someone who cannot see the light. That's what we call when we say that we sinned and we became totally unable to even follow God or to, to, to accept Jesus. That's what we mean. So we were like in darkness. And sure, I know that that's how it was. We were in darkness so we could not see the light so that we may follow the light. That was our spiritual state. We were dead, dead. But now the light has come. So no one can say that I cannot see the light. Many of these gangs and you know people I spoke to, you can see they see the light, they know the light. But they just decide not to follow the light. They will tell you, oh, Pastor, you know, I know, I know I should believe in Jesus, but my time has not come yet. I know, but my time has not come yet. I don't tell those people that are, ah, then you are not a chosen of God. God did not choose you. That, that's a misunderstanding of how things are. And that's why people don't even see why they should evangelize the why they should preach the word of god because let us leave it the way it is like, <laughs> like what that pastor was saying we don't
don't believe that way. We believe that people refuse to follow Jesus Christ by their own decision. They, they, the light is there, darkness is here. They can see both, but they decide to stay where they are. That's what will end them in hell because rejecting the Son of God, because they reject the Son of God, that's the greatest sin and that's what will end many people to hell. They see it, but they don't want to follow it. They reject it. The light has already come. Don't think that we are still in darkness. The light has already come. Those who cannot still see the light is because they don't love light. They prefer to stay in darkness. That's why they are still veiled. They stay in that darkness. They prefer to stay in darkness. Let's read one scripture. John. We are still in the Gospel of John. Chapter 16, verse 5. John 16, verse 5. But now I go away to him who sent me. And none of you asked me, Where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, Sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment <laughs> Jesus is saying that it's to your advantage that I go but if I go I will send you the help the Holy Spirit and when he has come he will convict the world the light has come he showed everyone is able to see the light. <laughs> now that he's going, he said that, but I will not leave you alone. I will send the help. When he comes, he will continue with these things. He will continue in the same way. Let's first read it and finish it. 12. I still have many things to say to you. But you cannot bear them now. However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority. But whatever he hears, he will speak and he will tell you things to come. Now I have so a lot of stuff to say here that I, I don't know what to say. Uh, I'm kind of okay. Now Jesus has come. Is the light is going now? He said that <laughs> I will send another one to continue convincing the world of sin. I say that there is no way anyone would say that the Lord has made me this way, you know, <laughs> it's the Lord's fault. If I don't believe it's the Lord's fault, no, that person is not being honest. And those who taught him the word and who are busy preaching these kind of things, they are just deceived. They are in delusion and they are misleading people. Because the light has shown, and now that Jesus is going, he said that I will send someone else. He will continue to convince the world of sin. Meaning, the Holy Spirit is now here on earth. I said, which was different from the whole testament time where the Holy Spirit was 
moving in this person, in that person, or was operating with a certain group of people. <laughs> but now Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit will come, will convince the world, the whole world. The Holy Spirit will convince the world of sin. Not only Christians, no, the whole, he will convince the world of sin. Which means, those people who are in darkness, they know they are in darkness. They know the light is there. But, they choose to believe what they believe. They choose to continue what they continue with because it suits them. Not that they do not know that the light is there. No, they can see, they know, but it's not just their thing, you know. It not okay, let me say this. Uh Okay, if I am given a chance to play a kind of sport, you know, I know there is football, I know there is golf. If I see that I love football, I love, you know, I can play football. So I decide to play football. It's not that I know that golf is there, <laughs> you know. It's just my decision, I, 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 because it suits me, because I love it, because I, I do not want just to stand there and, you know, with, uh, just not, you know, sweating and you are just standing there. I don't want that. So, the Holy Spirit is now available for, to everyone, to convince everyone. That's why Jesus is saying, go Preach the word to all nations, not to someone, to only few people. All nations. Teach them. Make them disciples. And by going and preaching the word of God to all nations, as I said, they are not the one convincing people, but the Holy Spirit who convinced of sin is on earth right now convicting people now if the holy spirit does that work still the holy spirit does not force anyone to accept or to not accept the holy spirit will show it to you will show the truth to you the holy spirit you know it's like god said that i will write now the word not on the stone but in their heart. So, everyone today, he has the ability to know God. <laughs> he has the ability to follow God. He has the ability to see the light because they are all called to follow the light. Because they are all called to accept, to see that light and to follow it. Because the call is to everyone. Hey, Jesus said that whosoever is thirsty, let him come. And drain will be and the the, 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 the spring of of uh, living water, you know, will will flow in him. So it was a call. Jesus said that whosoever is facing, let him come. I am here for everyone. But did they come? No. Did some come? Yes. But we do not say that it's because Jesus chose them. No. <laughs> the only incident. Of Jesus choosing is Jesus choosing the disciple, the apostles. Jesus chose the apostles. But Jesus did not choose who should follow him and who should not. As a matter of fact, Jesus did not have only those 12 apostles as disciples. Jesus had a lot of disciples. Even in the upper room, they were not only the 12, there were a lot of disciples. But the apostles, he chose 12. 
I said that Jesus chooses those who should work, who should be in the ministry because they have to be mandated. You see, even the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that when he will come, he will not speak of his own of his own authority. He said that he will take what is for me and he will communicate it to you. So even the Holy Spirit had to work under authority with the authority of Jesus Christ. This is what Jesus said. This is not me saying it. Just as I remember to come back to what that pastor was saying that okay, every wish has the Holy Spirit but we preach different stuff because we have preconceived ideas this this. I say, <laughs> pastor, that's not all. The thing is, one, those who preach, who teach should be mandated to speak because if they are then they operate under the authority of Jesus Christ teaching. So, they will not preach false doctrines and they will not contradict one another because they are all mandated by the same Lord, they have the same spirit. It's mandate. Being a Christian does not necessarily mean that you have the authority to teach. You can be a good Christian with the Spirit of God, but that's not the Spirit of teaching. That, that's not the anointing of teaching. That's not the calling of teaching. So you can get it, get it wrong, still get it wrong. You can still get it wrong. And I said again, not everyone who says he's a Christian has the Spirit. That, that, that's wrong. Not everyone who says I am Christian has the Spirit of God. The, the, the fact that we are preaching different things, I mean, on very fundamental issues, if we differ, is either one has the Spirit of God and one does not have, one is a true Christian, one is a false brother, as Paul said, or one is mandated, they are all Christians, true Christians, good Christians, but one is mandated. He is doing it under the authority of Christ and one is not. Even the Holy Spirit, Jesus said that when he comes, he will not speak of his own. He will speak under my authority. As Jesus himself, when he came, he said that I'm not speaking of my own. I'm speaking under the, my father's authority. I tell what I see him doing. This is what I do. So, coming back to our issue. Today, I just came to say that the grace of God, if we say that we are saved by grace, it means we're in darkness, we're blind. The grace of God came, as the Bible says, I think in Titus, that the grace of God that came taught us. <laughs> That's why I say that grace is not something. Grace is someone, is Jesus Christ taught us to live godly. So, the grace of God does not just say, Ah, oh, grace, here I am, okay, welcome, done. No, no, that's a misunderstanding because we think that grace is something. The grace, grace is someone who came. He was the light and then we can see light. He made it possible. We were unable to see the light. And don't tell people that we are still unable to see the light. No, we are able to see the light. That's why there are people going now to teach, people preaching. God, Jesus is sending people to preach the gospel because he has made it possible that people should, be, should see the light. He has made it possible. The grace is now available to everyone. And Jesus is inviting everyone to come and drink. Whosoever is thirsty, come and drink. But those who reject him, they will stand before the judgment of God because they've rejected the Son of Man. Not because God created them not to accept. <laughs> because it doesn't make sense, does it? Because you, you always want something that makes sense. But does it make sense even to yourself because you want things to make sense? Does it make sense? 
God will condemn them for the things they did not do. Or why the Bible is telling us that because they rejected the Son of God. They rejected. How can you reject something that you do not know? Or you do not have a choice to receive? Or you do not have, you know, the, the ability or the, the, the decision of to refuse or to accept? If we reject, it means we, here yeah, people, we decided to reject. The light has come. The light has come. And that's why I always say that's why we are doing what we are doing. That's why we have demanded to do what we are doing. Speak. The light has already come. The light is there. Just speak. And people who see, they will see the light because the light is already there. But just speak. Just speak. So, brothers and sisters, the church is in danger. No wonder in my last message I told you that no one, the church is dead. The church as we see it, not the church, because the church of God will never die, you know. But the church as we see it, as we, you know, we see it around, is dead. Why? Because of this kind of messages. Because you know, the Lord has already chosen His, and if you are sitting there in the church, it means the Lord has already chosen you, and you are okay, you are good to go. And people are dead, they don't even realize that they are dead, and uh, false brethren living in the churches, and we still say that they have the Holy Spirit and they are brothers because they, they are in the church, and there is nothing you can do, you, you are already chosen. <laughs> even those people sitting there, God cannot be mocked, brothers. God cannot be mocked. We see the truth, but we ignore to accept the truth. Even all those people sitting there that these people are busy telling them, no, you are okay, there is nothing you should do, uh, because uh, the Lord has all chosen you. If you are today a Christian in, this ch in the church, it means the Lord has already chosen you, it's done. Even those people, if you interrogate them, if you ask them, there is always something they feel. <laughs> you know, the spirits talking to them, showing them the true way, telling them they are, they are wrong. But they refuse to accept, to heed to the voice of the spirit. They call it a deception. Because they are telling them, that no, the spirit of guilt, if you feel guilty of something, if you feel like you are not good enough, if you feel like, uh, uh, if you feel like uh, you, you, you are not good enough for the Lord, it's just the spirit of the devil trying to make you feel guilty. Uh, you just believe what you believe in your heart, Jesus has already done it. Man, what is the work of the Holy Spirit? The work of the Holy Spirit is to convict people of sin, righteousness, and judgment. When you feel, when you, you feel in you that I'm not right with the Lord, I'm, I'm not right, I, I'm not sure. Man, don't think that it's the devil telling you that. They are lying to you that no, it's the devil telling you uh, to, to make you feel guilty. Just uh, be strong in your faith. It has nothing to do with that. The devil will never convince you of sin. You know, telling you that, <clears throat> sorry, telling you that your relationship with the Lord is not good. You have to, you have to seek the Lord. The devil will not tell you that. <laughs> the Bible says we have the witness of the Spirit. The Spirit testifies to our Spirit that we are sons of God. If you don't have that witness of the Spirit, if you, you don't have that, you don't feel that, brother, something is wrong. If the Spirit you feel in you, the Spirit telling you that something is wrong with you, you your relationship with the Lord is not good, uh, something is telling you that, no, you are not a good Christian, you are not a true Christian, you <laughs> don't say that it's the devil. The Holy Spirit is on earth, that's the work he's doing. Don't say that it's the devil. 
The devil will not push you to do good. The, 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 the devil will push you to do bad, to, to believe wrong. To believe wrong. I just don't understand these people, how they always contradict themselves. They say things, but they explain it in a way that sometimes they even confuse themselves. Like the other one I was following this morning, he was saying it, giving all these scriptures, but I wondered how does he explain this scripture? Because he was saying that at the last day, many will come and say, Lord, Lord, if I not prophesied in your name, if I not done that, this in your name, if I not done that in your name, and the Lord will look and say that, depart from me, I've never known you, depart from you, you the workers of uh, uh, ungodliness or un, uh, uh, unrighteousness. You workers of ungodliness. And he was saying these things, and he said, yeah, those are the people, they, they were calling out upon the name of the Lord, and they will come and say that, Lord, Lord, but I say that, don't you realize that that's what we are saying and that's what you are defending that it cannot happen. Because you are saying that those who call Lord, they have the Spirit of God. We say no, not all those who call the Lord have the Spirit of God. And you say that a Christian, <laughs> a Christian cannot, cannot be unsaved, <laughs> you see. A Christian uh, ca cannot be out of, you know, the kingdom. The, every Christian will be saved. And we say no. And now you are giving the scripture that say that not all those who say, uh, that the Lord will say that I've never known you. And I know many have tried to interpret that scripture in so many ways. And even as I'm talking right now, some may be sitting there and saying that he does know what he's talking about. We have an explanation about that. Man, I, I hate it all. <laughs> it's only your mind that tries to interpret things to suit what you believe. That's what we are saying. They saw the light, but they rejected the light. And you know, because of that, that, that will be the end of it. Lord, Lord, I, I did this in your name because you thought that calling Lord, you cannot call Lord not if not by the Spirit, and you thought that just saying Jesus, I receive you, uh, uh, I put my trust in you, and that's all it is. At the end, there are those who, who believe that and will say that Lord, but I did this in your name. I believed in you. I I was I had faith in you, and he will say, I've never known you. Can you believe it? You going through all these things and they will say that I've never known you. How is it that he did not know you? But you believed you were a Christian. This is what we are saying. Many will be surprised. Many will be surprised at the end. Of all these things of saying that if we sin, we, we, we live in sin, we 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 only destroy our fellowship and not our sonship. That's what will happen. That's why he will say, I, I've never known you. If now there is no relation between you and God, if now there is no fellowship as you call it, you so there is no friendship, there is no fellowship. What makes you think that when he comes, he will say that now we have fellowship? The Lord is coming for the church. <laughs> he's not coming for all these who talk. He's coming for the church. And the Bible says the church that is already prepared. He's not coming for the church that is somewhere saying that, okay, I'm still a son, but it's only that our fellowship and the Lord comes now and tell, takes everyone. No, he's coming for the church that is in communion with him. Actually, I will speak about this another day the rapture why it will happen and how will we we'll be able to meet him it's only if you are in relationship with him now you are bound in the, the spirit with the lord that's only when you can meet him in the air because you are connected you you are a part of him when he comes and all his parts 
if to come together to join and if you are not a part of him don't expect to be there he gave the example of the 10 virgin that's what you are doing right now he came did all go no they were all virgin yes they were all in the church yes they were all in church but did all all go no those who were prepared those who were ready that's what we are talking about don't tell people these things of oh, you are still a son, but the fellowship is broken, but you are still a son. If he comes uh, today, you are saved. What is that? Where do you get that? Why, what kind of gospel is this? The Lord, what, what is the use of preparing the church? Ephesians chapter 4. He's coming for that church that is ready. Five virgins who are ready. They are prepared to receive the Lord is coming and they were lamp were ready. And they came out and the others said, Oh, Bobo, some of your that, that's what you say at the end. Some of your oil, we do not have oil. <laughs> they were expecting him to come. They did not have oil and they thought when he comes, he will just say that, okay, even if you don't have oil, I'm bringing you oil. And the Lord takes only the five and he closes the door of heaven and they came after going to look for oil, looking for relationship now with the Lord making right. After coming now they say, oh Lord, here we are and the door is already closed, it's done. Don't play with God. Don't play with God. These things, they are known only if the Lord decide to reveal it to you because you are mandated and then you can preach it to the people. But we have people who are not mandated, who receive the mandate of people and denominations who made themselves today because of reading books and they come and they preach anything, they teach anything, they do not even understand the spiritual things of God and how it works. They are not in the truth because they, they, they deceive themselves and they deceive those who follow them. And at the end, there will be a surprise. Narrow is the way, and small is the gate that leads to life. But broad is the way that leads to uh, prediction, and many follow that way. Many follow that way. Be very careful, my brother, and today I will stop by here. I just want to say that, love the Lord. Whatever He says, do. Like the words of Mary, the mother of Jesus Christ in the faith of Canaan, when Jesus said, bring the word, he just feel, you know, the, the, you know, to do that miracle for the, to change worry into wine. And, you know, the mother of Jesus knew who Jesus was and how it works. He said to the people, whatsoever he says, just do. <laughs> Don't just believe that, oh, Jesus, we know, you can do miracle, you can change water into wine. Okay, go bring water in this. He said that, no, we do not have to go bring. We know that you can do it. The mother of Jesus said that, whatsoever he says, just do. That's the way the Lord works. Do not be deceived into thinking that I just believe in the Lord. Oh, it's by grace. You don't even understand what grace is. You don't understand what faith is. And you just say that it's not something that I should do. It's not something that, okay, I just believe and that's all. I'm telling you today, as Mary said to those people, whatsoever he asks you to do, just do. That's where the secret is. Whatsoever the Lord asks you to do, just do. Don't think. Don't analyze. Don't try to, to be philosophical. Don't be wasted in theology of men, doctrines of men and denominations and something that people hang on, they do not want to let go whatsoever jesus said in his word do just do just do 
then you know that you are his then you know that you are his follower then you know that you are his disciple and the holy spirit will testify to you that you are a son of god the holy spirit will give testimony as paul said to you that you are a son of god thank you very much uh for following again today uh let us just have a word of prayer father in the mighty name of jesus we thank you for this time lord of fellowship lord around your word lord bless your people lord as you mandated us to speak so we speak and oh lord as you promised lord that those all oh, you the sheep we hear the voice and we follow father let your sheep lord almighty god follow lord let your people see light lord almighty god and follow light let them know you lord and oh, father follow you and do whatever you say lord they should do that at the end they shall not be ashamed lord that you will not tell them that have never known you but you tell tell them welcome faithful servant enter into the joy of your father thank you lord keep us in the truth keep us always lord to move in the truth lord not to do our own things lord but to follow Oh Lord, whatever the Spirit says, Lord, because He takes from you, He's not saying it by His own, Lord, on His own, but He takes it from you and communicates it to us. Let the, us follow, Lord, the, the leading of the Spirit, Lord, and strengthen us, Lord, as we live in this world, Lord, and just, Lord, give us the strength we need. In the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Thank you so much for following. I bless you once again. And just enjoy in the presence of the Lord, rejoice in the Lord, because the Lord is always good. Thank you, and be blessed, my brethren. I see you next time.